So historically, we always think of, of a Kayan as the bad guy. Kayan's always the bad guy. And Hevel's the good guy. Kayan's the murderer, first homicide. Hevel's the victim. It's not so simple. I mean, Kayan did some very bad stuff. First of all, let's point out, as we did yesterday, that Kayan is the first one who came up with the idea of an offering to Hashem. It was his idea. It wasn't, it wasn't Hevel's idea. Hevel stole his idea. That's called infringement. In fact, I think it was Shamsul Farhish once said, he said, where's, where's Yesha? It's not fair. What do you want to tell a, a, a child who opens a chumash? And what does he hear? The bad guy commits murder and lives seven generations, and the good guy is dead. Like, it's, it's such a bad message. He says, Hevel wasn't such a good guy. <laughs> Hevel was a ganav. He stole his idea. And what did he do? He made a new and better version. That's like the biggest shtech. Like, take somebody else's idea and improve it. Anyway, this be, be that as made, he's not a vision, and, and uh, I don't know if that's an absolute concept, but when the Torah tells us about details, both of Kayin and Hevel, we have to know that there's a lesson for us. Sometimes we learn what not to do, and sometimes on the contrary. Sometimes we're being taught how we should follow a path of righteousness. I think yesterday was surprising for everybody to find out that Kayin had holy motives. In fact, he was a big mystic, a big makubal. There's this very deep idea of Kabbalistic oneness and so on and so forth, which is technically wrong, but theoretically wonderful. So today we're going to re-examine Cain, Cain's punishment, and let's let's revisit this. Maybe Cain is actually a role model for righteousness. That's radical. Cain is a role model for righteousness. Okay, so chapter four, verse thirteen. Cain says to God. He says, God you're telling me you, you can't stomach, you can't countenance my sin? Rashi says, God This you should read the Tamiya. Exclamation mark, question mark, like a, in, in amazement. Is my sin so great? You can countenance the supernal creatures, earthly creatures, and it's only like that's the one thing you can't stand? Mm-hmm. By, the, by the worst guy around? It's not a very contrite thing to say. It doesn't sound very nice, but that, that's what Cain says. And Cain is worried about self-preservation. He says, mm-hmm. You've banished me from the face of earth. From your face, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to hide. I'm going to be a, a nomad. In a constant state of movement, I'll never have any peace. Whoever will find me is going to kill me. Why does he think that? Why does he think that? Yeah. Just because he's a nomad, everybody wants to kill him? So first of all, he thought that the future members of the human race would want to take revenge on him. How would they even know? He's a nomad. But there's another interpretation. And that is that the animals would no longer see him as human. There's a certain fear of animals oh, right. for humans. Animals would attack. But when he behaved in an animalistic fashion, right. he would lose that he would lose that ability. Literacy. And therefore, yeah, so 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 the Medrash tells us he was he figured he's finished. So what does Kashem tell Kain? Hashem doesn't ignore him. He says, Call Hoyda Kayan Shivasayim, you come. Whoever's gonna kill Kayan, Hashem's gonna exact vengeance from him. And and it says that Hashem put a sign. Put a sign. People shouldn't be able to strike at him. It says he, he put a sign of his name, Rashi says. Hashem engraved, emblazoned the letter of Hashem's name. So I have to understand there's a euphemism. And Rashi talks there about the animals. So all the animals would be afraid of me up until now. Rashi says. It's like he's restored his humanity to him. 
So in a perfect world, were we to be perfectly righteous, we would have nothing to fear from wild animals. And that's how we understand Daniel goes into the lion's den. The lions don't bother him. Why? Because he looks perfectly human. But uh, we behave like animals. When you behave like an animal, then to the animal you look like an animal. And there are many stories of tzaddikim that animals came close to them, ran away, whether you look in the scripture, the story of Elisha, where the animals used to scurry away before him, or various other amazing stories of Rishonim and Achreinim, tzaddikim who were put into situations in which their lives would be in danger because of wild animals, and they were, and they were protected. All right, I don't, so I don't, this is the story, Cain, Cain is not totally, it's not, you know, God doesn't push him away entirely. He acknowledges his fears. He actually takes care of him. Mm-hmm. He gives him a, a sign. What happens next? This is what I want to focus on today. Vayetze Kayan Mufne Hashem. Kayan goes out from before Hashem. Vayeshev Be'eretz Noid Kidmas Eden. He goes away from where he is and he moves into this place called Kidmas Eden. So there's a fascinating Medrash Shaba. And the Medrash Shabbat says, Vayetze Kayin, that he left joyously because Hashem accepted his tshuva. What tshuva? There's some kind of tshuva going on here. He, he acknowledges, he wants to know, is my sin too big? That's tshuva. <laughs> when you don't have a role model for tshuva, you're the first one, yeah. <laughs> the Medrash says over there that other Mauritian learned from Kayin the power of tshuva. The Medr says, Pogba by other Mauritian. Other Mauritian encountered him. Amalei, how'd you do? Manasa bedincha. What happened with your court case? Amalei, so Kayan said to his father, Asisi tshuva. I did, I did tshuva. And it's pasharti. And I got a compromise. Got a hung jury. Like a, my sentence has been stayed. Ischel Adam Rishim mitapeach upon of Adam Rishim began to slap his head, slap his face, and he said, "Kachi keicha shul tshuva." Wow, this is unbelievable. This is the power of tshuva. Ani le yisi yadei. I didn't realize, because Adam never does a word of tshuva. Adam never even admits he did a sin. Hashem comes to him. He says, "He says, uh, woman, any anything going on? No, nothing. Nothing going on. We're just naked. Really? Who told you naked? Oh, it's not me. It's, it's, woman gave me the fruit. It goes to Chava. It's not me. It's the snake." Nobody ever acknowledged. The beginning of an Aveda is when you acknowledge it did something wrong. Cain calls it a sin. He doesn't say, me. In the beginning, he plays that game. Hashem al He doesn't say, my brother enraged me. He doesn't say, my brother stole from me. He doesn't say, he, 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 he did something to make me very angry. He, he realizes that he sinned. He realizes he sinned. Hashem speaks very sharp words to him. And Cain says, my sin is too great. My sin is too great. Am I finished? Is it? So this is, I guess, like this is some kind of tshuva. Okay. So Cain goes out of Hashem. That's what the Medrash says. Now, in this idea of going away before Hashem, Vayetze Cain, Rashi says, it doesn't mean that he that he went anywhere. He didn't go. He didn't go anywhere because afterwards it says Vayeshev. So Vayetze and Vayeshev. Vayeshev would mean he returned somewhere. It says first Vayetze. Where did he go out of? So Rashi says the word Vayetze does not mean literally that he traveled a certain physical space. Rather, what does Vayetze mean? Vayetze Kain says Rashi, Yotzabachno, that he left the presence of Hashem with a sense of deep remorse, deep shame, deep humility. That means Vayetze. He didn't stand with the same, said, I did something wrong. <laughs> you, you put me in a situation. We don't hear this by Adam Achava. Yotzebach, no. Kegoynev das al yena. Here Rashi doesn't sound so nice, for, doesn't sound so good for him, as if somebody who's trying to conceal his thoughts from Hashem, or as if, I think it's like more like as if he got his hand caught in the cookie jar. Mm-hmm. He, he tried to say, I don't know, my, my brother's keeper? Hashem says, <laughs> really? My brother's keeper? <laughs> So he's, he's, he's caught red-handed. 
Now, usually, when you're caught red-handed, there's some kind of regret. Doesn't mean you regret doing what you did, but... Regrets getting caught. They tell a famous story, the turn of the century, in the Slabatki Yeshiva, unfortunately. They were learning very well, but there's no Yerushalayim. And there was, uh, was Bacham didn't keep Shabbos. So one of the Rosh Yeshivas came once into a, a dormitory room and he found a bunch of Bacham, three Bacham, playing cards and smoking on Shabbos. And he flew into a rage. And one Bacham said, I, I, I forgot. He said, what do you forget? He said, I forgot it was Shabbos. And, and the, other, the other Yeshiva student said, I, I forgot. What did you forget? I forgot you're not allowed to smoke on Shabbos. And the third one said, I forgot. So what do you forget? I said, I forgot to lock the door. <laughs> Pulled down the blind. You forgot. They're all remorseful. <laughs> yeah, the question is about what? <laughs> but there seems to be an element of remorse. Seems Kain, Kain is not, he doesn't have this Teflon coating on his eye. I didn't do anything wrong. It's, it's your fault. You put me in a situation. He has... He comes with some kind of remorse. He admits he did wrong, but the remorse really doesn't come out when he just tells God, what, my sin? You can't hey, handle he, my he sin? He doesn't exactly say al chet. He doesn't say ashamnu, true. But, but, he, but he, do, he does. He acknowledges he did a sin. And maybe that's why it wasn't totally forgiven. He's only suspended for seven generations. The sentence. He was maybe. Forgiven. Maybe. Was but but the fact true. is, he lived a very long life. That's a partial truth. The Radak says... He, it, he, the Radak learns like Rashi that he left being before Hashem, but it's not a physical journey. He says he was in a state where he could before have received prophecy. Hashem speaks to him. Hashem does speak to him. He brings a carbon. Hashem doesn't accept his carbon, but he speaks to him about the carbon. Mm-hmm. And he tells him about sin. Mm-hmm. Sin always crouches at your doorstep. You have to avoid it. He talks to him about this. There's, like a, there's a dialogue going on. Mm-hmm. So he was in a makam of Nevoah. And HaKadosh Baruch at that point Kind of, Kayan left. He left that area. He no, he no longer had the special privilege. But the Chizkuni says something fascinating. He says, He didn't, he didn't ignore what he did wrong. He accepted upon himself with humility what Hashem had meted out for him. He said, this is my, my punishment. I deserve it. And, and, and he left as such. So he's not, he's not as bad as everybody thinks. Kayan, Kayan exhibits some kind of remorse, some kind of contriteness. He's, where does he go? He goes, bad. it's night. What's the land of night? So, the, the Rashi says, Ba'eretz shakal ha'goylin nadim sham. All those who exile themselves go there. It's kind of a funny Rashi. <laughs> what does it mean, all exiles? There's no other people yet. Yeah. So Rashi says, Kidmas Eden, east of Eden, sham gala aviv. That's where other Marisha went. Kishi goyresh mi when he was chased out of Gan Eden, Shenemar, by Yashkein Mikedem Ligan Eden. He went east of Gan Eden, Begoyman. Lishmer es Shmiras Derech Mavoy Hagan. So there was, there's a, a guard, so to speak, at the door, and he's east of that. Sheyesh Lilmeid, Shahoya Adam, Sham, we can learn that that's where Adam stayed. Umatzinu, and we find Ruach Mizrachis Keletes Pechomarke Mesaraitzkin. We find that whenever somebody is in a bad situation and needs to seek protection, head east. Where do we see this? We see this that when, when it came to s- separating cities of refuge for which the would-be murderer or accidental murderer would have to go into exile, it says, Az Yavdil Moshe, then Moshe designated, Mizracha Shamesh, in the easterly direction. So even though... We have this, the, the, the areas of the other side of the Jordan is already in the east side, already the eastern banks. Nonetheless, there's an emphasis on the eastern side. So there's something about east, and when you get into trouble, head east. Rashi says, why is it called Eretz Night? It should be called Ruach Night. And therefore, because it says Eretz Night, so Rashi says that there's something about the land itself, called Mokim Shohoya Hoylech, Wherever Cain would go, the earth would tremble beneath him. And the creatures, which is presumably animals at this time. There was no real people yet. The animals had a method of communication with each other. 
they would indicate to each other, suru mi alof, go away from this person. They, they, were, they, were, they, were, he, they found him loathsome. Shezeo shahadegis achiv. He's the guy who killed his brother. So he was not exactly Tarzan. The animal is not friendly with him. They were like removing themselves from him. Why did they push him away? So he lived a very lonely existence. And that was Cain's exile. And that teaches us about the idea of exile. How did he repent? Went into exile. Adam Rishon also went the easterly direction. Okay, so we have this business with easterly direction, and that's where and that's where he went. Now, the problem the problem with having to do with this is the next verse is talking about him having getting married. He marries a twin sister. He's having children. In verse seventeen, he gets married. He's intimate with his wife. Vatar, she becomes pregnant. Vatel des Chanoch has a son. He calls him education. Then he goes into the development business. He's building a city. He works for a city. He calls the name of the city Chanoch. So how do we understand this? Did he go into Eretz Noid, or was he somewhere else? So the Radak says, he went, he went into this exilic reality, and then he came back afterwards. So he, he was under a self-imposed exile, not permanently. For a time he was in exile, and Radak says then he came back to civilization. And then he got married, then he had a child, then he built a family, and he built a city. Ramban says he didn't go into exile once. Cain was a loner. He would come home, he would spend time with his family, and he would go into, into exile again. He would walk alone, because he, he, never, he never was able to overcome the guilt of what he did. He didn't move on. He didn't just simply go, you know, have, have a, a happy, happy uh, happily ever after kind of existence. He's constantly re-exiling himself. And the Vilna Gaon says something really fascinating. He says, what's east of Mesopotamia? We have to guess, Gan Eden is around Mesopotamia, the earliest relics of civilization, I give or take about five and a half, six thousand years old, which is exactly when it's supposed to be, right? We believe the world's 5,770 years old. At least that's where the narrative of creation picks up from. And all of the archaeology lines up perfectly with that. There's no archaeology, no human artifacts found that are older than five and a half thousand years old. Mesopotamia is where the first, the oldest artifacts are found. What's east of Mesopotamia? First of all, where's Mesopotamia? Iraq. Yeah, Iraq, central, southern Iraq. What's east of that? East of Iraq. It's Israel. So the, 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 the Vilna Gaon says... west of Iraq. It's Israel would be west of Iraq, you're right. Asia. I don't know how he works it out, but that's what he says. <laughs> he says, this is Eretz Yisrael. So why is it called Eretz Noid, the land of movement? He said, because the Jewish people are always being exiled from Eretz Yisrael. But even though we're always exiled from Eretz Yisrael, we always remain tethered to Eretz Yisrael. It's called Eretz Noid because of that. It's, a, it's like a temporary land. It's ours, but we're always in a state, in the Zillic state. Vilna Gaon says twice, he emphasizes that Kidmas Eden it means he's refers to Eretz Yisrael. I, I'm not sure how he works out the east and west of it, but it's like what he says. It did. It just all did extend to Euphrates so River. It was all the way up there. Maybe yeah, yeah. Made in this yeah. Year, and it's still, and all of that was his. That could be. That could be. Rashi does tell us in the beginning that the, the river Pras, which is the Euphrates River, is the border of Eretz Yisrael. So... Don't think of the sliver of Israel that we have today. Think of broad biblical Israel and it's in its full context. So what does he do? He builds a city. He builds a city. And this city was going to call Hanoich. That was the name of the city. A city for who? For future generations. By he bayna, by he kain bayna ir, by he kashem ir Hanoich. As she says, lezecha b'nei Hanoich. He wanted Hanoich to have a memorial. The Torah tells us immediately about the next generations. Chanoich <laughs> gave birth to Irod, and Irod yod es michu yoel. Michu yoel yod misu shoel. Misu shoel yolad es lamech. So here's something really interesting. The name michu yoel has Hashem's name in it. And the name misu shoel has Hashem's name in it. So our sages tell us that Michu is a conjunction of Machui El, erasing God. 
erased from God. And misushael means, from the terminology of thrown or torn away from God. In other words, that I've once explained that this, this man, this Kayan fellow, he tried to bring up a righteous generation, called the son education, to give him an education, to make him into a mensch. But he failed in the end. What happened? His grandson already called himself cut off, mm. erased from God, ripped away from God. So Cain was not really successful. He did not create a righteous generation after him. Wasn't that idol worship already? They were calling... At this point, idol worship is already yeah. starting. And the next, the next reading is all about Lamech and, mm. and a society that's totally rotten. And fascinatingly, the next reading, which you're not going to be able to get to today, but in the next reading, we hear about a society that's rotten and what ro makes the society rotten the objectification of women. That's the first sign of a rotten society. That's Western civilization. The two eyes, one for huh? childbearing, one for fun. Right? So, so basically, a woman was objectified. That's she, she was a toy for a man to abuse. And that's the beginning of a rotten society. That's where the society unravels from. But let's focus on, the, on, 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 on what he was trying to do. He wanted to build a, a, a city. It's Ramban, Ramban, who says that he was going back into exile constantly, and then he would come back to his family, and then he would go back into exile. What does this mean? So Ramban says he built a little, then he would disappear. He was like a loner, like a crazy man. You know? he, he, he didn't live a peaceful existence. Then he came back, and he built a little more, and then he'd leave again, and he never really found satisfaction in what he did. He, was, he, was a, he, always, he always had a miserable existence. He could never find happiness, even though he built a family, built a city. The Kliyakar says that he, his the problem was he put all his emphasis into material building. He built a city. He wanted to educate his son, but he wanted to build a city. It was all about the material reality. And, and the Kliyakar says a person who only focuses on material possession and material development is never going to be happy. He says, Yeshle Mana has 100, writes him a sign, he has 200. A person whose value system is only money, possessions, and material realities is never going to find any happiness. And he says, Cain was a perfect example of that. Why did he build a city? Radak says he wanted to live. He wanted to live with other people. He didn't like this nomadic, loner existence. He, he wanted to live. And he wanted to create cohesion for future generations. He was the opposite of cohesion. He killed his own brother. He wanted to create cohesion now, that people should learn how to get along, people should live together. The Malbim goes ahead and says he wanted to fix his sin. He wanted to make a society that was just. He wanted to make a society that would amalgamate, a society in which people would help one another. This is the original idea of urbanization. He wanted to create a municipality. A municipality is based on law and order. It's not the Wild West, the Wild East in this case. And that's why he called the city Chanoich. He was hoping that Chanoich would continue his vision. He would continue to build and develop society. He wanted to, he wanted to build a, a, a healthy reality. Ramban emphasizes he didn't build it for himself. This was not about himself. He had a, a sense of destiny. He had a sense of future. He wanted to build a better future. <coughs> Ramban doesn't tell us, and I don't know if he knew. Because he didn't bring up the uh, his son. Maybe that was his problem. Maybe, maybe he was so riddled with guilt that he wasn't dealing with his son enough. Maybe. I don't know. The Rebbe takes all of this and sews it together in the most marvelous way. Page Kofalov. The, pre the presumption here, the Rebbe's, the Rebbe's presumption, the Rebbe's approach is so illuminating. It's a story with, with Cain who does a sin that's a lesson for us. Cain who does some kind of tshuva maybe there's a lesson there for us. What's the lesson that Cain got married and built the city? Who cares? Where's the toida element? Is it just human history? Here's the first municipality? Here's the first time society was created? What difference does it make? But where, where, where's the hayra? Where is the, the lesson from the story? So the Rebbe says there's an enormous lesson that's being portrayed to us. Sipur Zed, this story, Baba Hemshech, Le Sipur Oides, Hachuva, 
Sha'asar Kayan. The story of, of, of Kayan building a city is the next page. It comes after the episode of Kayan's doing tshuva, which we already established that Kayan did some kind of tshuva. And he's the world's first bal tshuva then. He had no precedent. So you can't really say, ha, that's tshuva. Who did he have to learn from? His parents? His parents never even acknowledged anything wrong. For all we know, all they did is talk about the supper table. He blamed her, and she blamed the snake. We don't know. They, have to, we, they never acknowledged it did anything wrong. That was the biggest problem. He blamed God. He said, you gave me a woman. She said, you made me a snake. So Cain does do tshuva. And what does this story come? It comes by Hem Shech L'Sipre, this tshuva Shasa Cain. Like the Medesh Rabbah that we mentioned earlier, the Medesh Rabbah says, Yotza Sameach. Ashi doesn't say this. Medesh Rabbah says he left happy. Why did he leave happy? He left happy. <coughs> because he had the sense that Hashem had accepted his tshuva. Why did he have that sense? Because his verdict was stayed. Here Hashem says, There's no room for you in this world, and now he's going to live for seven generations. He says, this is unbelievable. The Torah comes now to add. It's not enough for you to know that Cain experienced remorse and regret and resolve. From Cain we can learn. From Cain, not only do we learn the idea that there is something called Tshuva. We didn't know there's something called Tshuva before. Now we know there's something called Tshuva. Not only do we know there's something called Tshuva. Elegames Eifen Asiyas HaTshuva. Kain is the role model. He's teaching us how you do tshuva. Kain is a role model? How, how is he a role model? He's teaching us how to do tshuva? Yes. Why? Kain lehistapik becharata bilvad. Kain didn't just have regret. As most people, when they do something wrong, they live with regrets. They have sense of remorse. And they feel good about that. At least I have a conscience. At least, a, at least I'm not happy about what I did. It wasn't just enough. Kabbalas, Einish Hagalas. He accepted upon himself this, this punishment. And like Ramban says, it was like a, self, a self-inflicted a self punishment. He kept exiling himself. Hashem said, you have to exile? Kept exiling. Kept pushing himself out of the way. Didn't allow himself to live a normal life. He, he was like tortured himself. That's not good enough. What else did Cain do? He did something. And what was the purpose of his doing something? He wanted to fix what he broke. What did he break? He brought about strife. He brought about murder. He brought about mayhem. He brought about people being pulled apart. Brothers being pulled apart in the most heinous, most egregious way. So now he wants to fix it. First of all, what did he do? After killing one, after extinguishing one life, what did he try to do right away? He wanted to bring new life into this world. And that's He felt terrible. He was the cause of a life being snuffed out. He wanted to be the one to cause now a life to be brought in. It wasn't enough for him to, one life, a life gone, a life replaced. He tried to build, develop, establish. What he did is the is an act of murder is the greatest act of destruction that destroys everything. So he destroyed the world, now he tried to build the world. So the next thing we know, how, do, how, do, how does the trajectory of the Pasuk follow? He went out and he accepts upon himself, first of all he does tshuva, Vayetze says the Medrash, Vayetze b'simcha. So that Vayetze means does tshuva. What's the next word? Vayetze b'aretz noid. He imposes a self-imposed exile. So he does tshuva, he, he has remorse, and he ex- expresses this, this idea. And then what's the next thing he does? He goes ahead, he gets married, he tries to bring a child into the world. What's the next thing? He builds a city. And what does he want to do with the city? What does he name the city? What does Chanoich mean? To teach. He wants to teach generations, learn some of my mistakes. Don't do what I did. Build a better world. And he calls that name of the city. And he tries to inspire his son that his son should also live a life like that. As we learned, that, 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 
Ramban says he was hoping that his son would continue what he started. He would continue building this, that his son would build afterwards. Because the whole idea of, of municipality and city dwelling and, ur- and urbanization is that we need each other. Social contract. So, so, yeah, ba- basic, the basic essence of a social mm-hmm. contract. Mm-hmm. That's what he wanted to show how people could live together. Lulamedcha, what does this teach you? Shabbasiyas tshuva, when it comes to doing tshuva, and this is such a powerful lesson, my friends, when it comes to doing tshuva, a person has to know it's not enough to cut yourself off the sin. It's not even enough to accept upon yourself your punishment and say, I deserve this. The person who did something bad now has to do something good. In the language of the Kliyakar, Lasses is a mitzvah hafchis. Do an opposite, a counterweight. Al haver al haver shasa. You did a sin. You caused injury and destruction to society. Now the counterweight of that is to build and develop society. That people could not get along to the point that they killed each other. Now that people get along to the point that they will be, you know, in a sense, subservient to each other. That's what this was all about. He possesses the the kliyakar. You took an avasai, and that's where the, the Malvin picks up. The Malvin picks up in the kliyakar and develops that idea. He says ratzal takecheter. So the Rebbe builds on this medrash and the Ramban and the kliyakar and the Malvin, which takes us to a certain place, which explains reframes the Kayan narrative. And the Rebbe says this is the greatest role model. Though. He is the greatest lesson for children. That a yid has to know, a person has to know. Kaya wasn't Jewish. A person has to know that you do something bad, you have to do something good. If you cause injury, you have to bring about wholesomeness. It's not a perfect example, but this I once heard that the fellow who started the Nobel Prize, Alfred Nobel, which was supposed to be a good thing, not supposed to be giving in, in peace prizes to mass murderers. It was supposed to be a, a good to encourage human achievement. That he, I, well, it's good, I, don't, I, don't, I, never, I never checked this out, that he created dynamite. That's where he made his fortune. That's where he made his fortune. And, and he figured, his, this his is his how I'm going to be known. So I created mass destruction. Nobody, got, nobody killed in such a mass way. To, so, he, so in order to make up for what he did, he said, let me take that fortune I made and dedicate it towards the building of civilization. If this indeed is true, that's, that makes sense. Still need to learn from that. That's exactly what Kayan showed us. So in summation, Cain is not only a bad guy, he is. He did a very bad thing. But Cain is also a role model of righteousness, or at least one of repentance and the restoration of spirit. Kain, That's something. Cain is like every human being. He had two sides. He recognized both sides.